Hello, in this video we will be discussing firearm safety and how to prevent injuries and accidents from occurring when using a firearm. My name is George and today I will be talking about five basic firearm safety rules that everyone should know when using a firearm. Rule number one, treat all your firearms as if they are loaded and the condition of your gun must be known. Is there a round in the chamber? Is there a round in the magazine? Did you check? If you're actively not shooting your firearm, be sure to unload it before safely putting it down. Rule number two, always wear appropriate eye and ear protection when using your firearm. Eyewear, like goggles or sunglasses, can protect your eyes in the case that a casing ejects from the gun and hits towards your face. Wearing eye protection can also help prevent immediate and permanent hearing loss. When it comes to rules three and four, they kind of go together. Always, always, Keep your firearm pointed in a safe direction, never pointed towards anyone else. Also, rule number four, be certain of your target and what could lie behind it. Be sure to make sure there's no pedestrians or any bystanders standing near or close to the target you are trying to shoot. And lastly, the fifth and final rule, keep your finger away from the guard and the trigger until you are ready to fire. And now I will pass it on to Luke, who will be talking about cleaning and maintenance of firearms. I am going to talk to y'all today about uh, firearm cleaning and maintenance. And so whenever you have a firearm, you're going to want to keep it in good condition. And so you're going to want to keep it clean, especially clean it after every time you use it. And so you're going to need a cleaning kit that is uh, the appropriate caliber for your weapon and also lubricants and a cleaning agent that is specifically made for firearms. And so when you go to clean it, you're going to want to make sure that the muzzle is pointing in a safe direction. Unload it completely. Locked slot back. Visually inspect it. Make sure there's no more ammo in there. Then you're going to set your ammo off to the side away from the cleaning station. And so now every gun comes apart different. So you're going to need to consult your owner's manual on how to disassemble it. Um, and then the easiest way to clean it from there is to use some sort of pressurized cleaner and then scrape it out with a nylon brush. And then you can use either a boar snake or a boar brush to clean out the barrel part. And then you can get a rag, wipe off any excess cleaner, and wipe down your magazine. The magazine doesn't usually take too much maintenance. And so once you get done with all that, you're going to want to go to oiling. And so you're going to make sure you have a specific lubricant made for firearms. And you're going to want to lubricate any metal on metal parts, especially up in here, back in this area. Anywhere that metal is on metal is uh, directly in contact. That way to keep everything working smooth and... Uh, in order and so if you have a little extra oil left over at the end that's okay if there's a little more on the gun at the end that's okay um just make sure there's not too much um and so then you're going to go back to reassemble um your firearm according to the owner's manual and so when you go to store the gun you're going to want to store it somewhere that's safe somewhere that's away from children and other people who do not need to be around it um, the best way to store it is to use some sort of lock, such as a trigger lock, a cable lock, a lock box, or a safe, or something in that sort. I use a lock box here, and so anything that works to keep it safe and secure. And that's a little bit about maintenance and cleaning. I'm Austin, and we're going to go into exactly how firearms function, and some very important safety features on most types of sidearms. So let's get into it. So the first style of sidearm I'd like to talk about is a revolver. Now this is a Smith & Wesson double action uh, six shot 350, chamber in 357. Just to show all the firearms I'll be showing are unloaded. But this is great because it allows me to talk about some important features of sidearms. So the first thing I'd like to talk about is single action versus double action. Now a single action, this is the hammer, will not engage itself. So in order to fire a single action, you would have to cock back the hammer yourself before firing. Now a double action, like this is, does not require that and will cock back the hammer on its own and fire in a single trigger pull. So that's really the difference and it's important to know which one you have. Now there's no built-in safety features to a revolver typically. Some high-end ones may have something but typical ones will not. So the only safety you have is basically your finger. Of course, batching good trigger discipline, this gun should never go off unintentionally. However, there is an important feature I'd like to mention on any 20th century single action revolver. And a couple of the newer ones, it'd be important for you to 
uh, look up what gun you have and see if this is necessary or not for your make and model of gun. So I've loaded in five rounds. This holds six, I've loaded in five. Now if this were a single action revolver, uh, especially an older one, you would want to do this and this is called a cowboy load. And the reason you want to do this is because if I were to load all six and put this in a battery and something were to hit the hammer from behind like so, with enough force, it would discharge that round unintentionally. So it's, it was always, or it's common practice to only load five and keep one empty chamber uh, at the ready. And then you would have to, of course, cock it back and it would do the next uh, chamber. Now, that may not sound super convincing, but I'm gonna link in the description a video from Hickok45. He does a great demonstration with an empty primer. Um, and you can see exactly how important it is to do so. The next style of sidearm I want to show you is a hammered semi-automatic uh, pistol. This is a Ruger 1911 chambered in 45. I have this out of battery to show you that it is unloaded. And I will put this in the battery simply by depressing the slide lock. Now, there are a number of safety features on this particular gun. A sidearm you own may have some or none of these or even all. So. The same as a revolver, if the hammer is cocked back, it has the potential to fire. So let's go over the most common safety in industry, which would be a thumb safety. It is engaged simply by flipping it up, and once engaged, the gun will not fire. Disengaged, it will fire again. Now, these are typically on the left side, but occasionally they do make ambidextrous ones or left-handed ones. As you can see on this side, does not have a thumb safety. Now the next one I want to go to is slightly more rare depending on what brand you're shopping for would be a grip safety. Now this one is equipped with the beaver tail to prevent you from getting hit by the hammer. And this functions much the same way as thumb safety, but it is based on the depression of this. So that if this is not depressed, the gun will not fire. And to show you this, I will use a bad handling technique to show you that while not depressed, the gun is incapable of firing. Depress it and it will fire. One more time, and I will show you a safety that is present on all semi-automatic firearms, and you should test upon rebuilding your gun from cleaning. And that is that if the gun is taken out of battery, it should not fire. I will demonstrate this with the palm of my hand against the front of the firearm and simply press. You can see it moved about a quarter of an inch, and watch very closely, you'll see about a quarter of an inch and if I try to fire, all other safeties are disengaged. It will not fire. Now, these are the only three safeties that are on this firearm aside from your own trigger discipline. But it does have quite a few. So I would say this is a relatively safe gun to handle. The final style of side armor I talked to you about is a polymer style striker fire uh, pistol. This is a Smith & Wesson M&P chambered N22. If you're wondering why I'm not using a larger caliber, it's because the safety features in this are really well defined and I thought it might be easier to show on video. So I will simply place this in the battery by pulling back on the slide and allowing the thumb lock to disengage on its own. Okay, the firearm is now ready to fire. Now, the first safety you may already see is once again another thumb safety. Flip it up, the gun will no longer fire. Unlike the other one, this one's ambidextrous, so it is viable for left-handed shooters as well. Now I will flip this down to showcase the remainder of the safeties. The first one, which is going to be hard to see, but you may be able to hear it, would be a magazine safety. If there is no magazine present in this firearm, it will not fire even with all other safeties disengaged. Place the empty magazine, and all other safeties are uh, disengaged. And if you heard, the firing pin did strike as well as if the magazine is empty, this will not go back into the battery, regardless of the effort you put into it. Remove the magazine, at least partially, you can put it back into battery, and by replacing the uh, magazine, it is back in a firing position. Now the next safety is gonna be a little hard to see, but this has a built-in trigger safety. There is a small hinge built into the trigger, and if the bottom half of the trigger is not depressed, as well as the top, this gun will not fire. And this is gonna be hard for me to showcase, but I'm going to try to only depress the top of the trigger. 
you may be able to see there is a small piece of metal here that is preventing it from fully depressing. And that's basically how it works. And if I go into a full trigger press, it does fire again. Now, I was, unlike the previous one, this does not have a built-in grip safety. So, of course, that's not present. But, like I said, all firearms should have this. This one happens to be a little more severe than the other one, is that if this is taken out of battery by roughly half an inch, it, will, it is not capable of firing. Of course, now this is considerably more than the other one, but it is still important to test when cleaning. So there you have it. There's a ton of safety features present in sidearms, and it's important to know exactly which ones are present on any sidearm you may own or may be operating. Now I'm going to hand it off to Campbell. She's going to give you some excellent rifle safety tips. Thanks, Austin. So here I have a standard AR-15, and I'm going to be talking about some of the safety features that go along with it. So since the first rule of gun safety is to always make sure to check if your gun is loaded or unloaded, I'm going to show you how to do that with this gun. So right here we have our charging handle, and we're always going to make sure to pull it back. And right here you can see that our dust cover popped open, and if we had a round it would be right here in this little pocket, but since you can see that it is empty, we know that our gun is unloaded. Next, we would check for a magazine. Obviously, there is no magazine in here. It would be right here. And if there was a magazine to make sure it's out, you would press the mag release button right here. Another feature we have is our safety selector switch right here. Right here, you can see that our safety selector switch is horizontal and it is pointed at the little picture with the X over it. This means that with pulling the trigger, nothing will happen. <laughs> Next, we switch it to the vertical position. And the vertical position is pointed at the little box with no X. This means that when a pull of the trigger, a bullet will fire. Here we have the gun taken apart. So right here we have our upper. Here is the lower, the bolt carrier group, and then the charging handle. So when you pull the trigger, the hammer will hit the firing pin inside the bolt carrier, which will then strike the primer of the bullet, igniting the gunpowder and sending it down the end of the barrel. In the case of a misfire, what you're going to do is just pull the charging handle back to eject the bad round and reload a new one. In the case of a jam, you're going to make sure that your safety switch is on no fire and you're going to press your mag release button to release your magazine and then you're going to pull your charging handle back until you see the casing fall out. And lastly, always be aware of where your barrel is pointing, never pull the trigger unless you are ready, and always make sure that it is kept clean and stored safely. Wow guys, that was very informative. I hope you enjoyed our video about firearm safety and how you can prevent an accident from occurring.